All right, welcome back as we continue with the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown and the NFL Draft coming up. All right, gentlemen, Rich, I'll start with you here. I want to talk about the Steelers. Last year we saw them trade up all the way to number 10. They don't necessarily have equity to trade this year to do that, but they could trade down if they feel it's a deep enough position, whatever they're looking at, and they can acquire more picks. Kevin Colbert likes more picks. Do you see that happening at all? I think they're going to stay where they are, but I think they would trade down more than they would trade up um, if you had to give me that option and to acquire more picks because, yeah, they don't have as many as they have had in years past. So I could see them potentially trading down and say those running backs aren't there and they, they want a specific wide receiver that they know will be there later in the second because it is a deep wide receiver draft then potentially you could do that and maybe add another fourth or something. Um, I, so I could see that happening. There's no question about it. But I think those high-end running backs, uh, that group of four or five that we're talking about, that, that's, that's your sweet spot there, the top 50. I think those guys will be gone by the time you get past 50. Bob, I, I can't see them doing that until we get to the last day of the draft and maybe they, they do some of that with their fourth through seventh round picks. Uh, they're in a win-now mode, okay? This is... Kevin Colbert, I think, borrowing from Jim Rutherford and what, how he looks at the Penguins. You need guys that are going to instant impact your team. And so I think that's why you need, you need your second-round pick. I would not move back because you get an extra fifth-round pick. Fifth-round picks never pan out. They barely ever do. So I, I would not move back a few spots just to pick up a late-round pick down the road. I don't see the value. I want quality, not quantity. You said win now. I agree with that win now. So based on that, I can't understand some of these projections coming out with quarterbacks and mock drafts. And the Steelers are said to be interested, according to some of these mock drafts, in Jalen Hurts, in Jordan Love. I mean, there was one scenario where it was traded up into the first round to get yeah. Jordan Love, <laughs> which is just insane for me to even consider that. But Pony, I know how you feel about Jameis Winston, and I realize that still could be an option. But if they have the information on one of these quarterbacks that can be a franchise, or at least they believe a franchise, do you think there's any legitimacy to any thought of drafting a quarterback? No, I think I, if, I, if I was Art Rooney, I, would, I, I can't walk into the room, but I can tell uh, Mike Tomlin and Kevin Colbert, by, no, you're not taking a quarterback no matter what. Unless it's like a six-round guy that's here just as a warm body or something, and you're, and you're using a pick there, taking a flyer. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, these guys are sniffing glue to come up with these ideas. It's just preposterous, Bob. They need a quarterback that's better than Mason Rudolph. That much is clear. That much is known. He can't play. They need to get better at backup quarterback. But you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't take a shot on a, on a second-round guy and say he's our Ben Roethlisberger replacement. No, that's a bad idea. And these guys are national experts. Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, so-called experts. They have absolutely no feel of the Steelers. Yes, maybe they need a quarterback in a couple years, but they need a lot of other things right now. Uh, like we talked about, win now, two years. There's a window here. Uh, they don't need a quarterback in these two years. And if they do draft a quarterback, then we got to start questioning how healthy is Ben Roethlisberger? Will he be able to play this year? Uh, will he be able to finish the season this year? Um, I think you put all the... Uh, all the, you bet on Ben Roethlisberger for the next two years, and you wait on a quarterback. Yeah, but if you do that and you have an injury like we had last year, that's to Andrew's point, that all of a sudden now you're stuck with what you have. Which leads me to this, because Andrew, we saw a tweet this week from Roddy White, who a very good receiver, who endorsed Cam Newton coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I'd like to know uh, what Roddy White is doing with, it, with this <laughs> quarantine because apparently he's not lucid right now. His mind is not right. Cam Newton is more banged up than Roethlisberger, and even though he's 30, he's going on 50 in NFL years. Um, I think he's shot. I think he's done. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see anything to that. Now, you know, Jameis or another – guys, it's just a veteran quarterback. I want to been there, done that, done that before – um, competent backup on their roster, a Charlie, even a Charlie Batch type, somebody like that, because what they have behind Ben, just in my opinion, is not good enough. 
I think they're going to go with what they got right now. That's the feel that I get, even after talking to everyone. And if they question what they have out of training camp, if there is a training camp or a shortened training camp, then maybe they would bring in a Jameis Winston or they would bring in a Cam Newton like they did, uh, you know, way back when, when they brought in Byron Leftwich and Dante Culpepper to compete for the backup job. I think that's the way they would go. Uh, th th there's no way they're going to draft a quarterback th this year, in my opinion, um, even if – even if you think one is – your future franchise quarterbacks aren't going to be there at pick number 49. Uh, at least that's the way it goes. I agree. You know, I mean, there, you, you don't see too many Tom Brady's anymore going in the sixth round. Your franchise quarterback go in the first 20 picks of the draft. They don't have that. And if they do lose Ben Roethlisberger this year and they're bad again, maybe they'll be in the top 10 and be able to draft that guy. <clears throat> well, there are exceptions to that, Jimmy Garoppolo being one. Anyway, it's time to move on. We got – Around the horn for this week's smooth moves brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops you're going to find anywhere. That would be Armina Stone. Rich, what is your smooth move of the week? I'm going to give it to Thomas Dahl. He was the producer of that movie 42 about Jackie Robinson's life. And uh, Jackie Robinson Day was earlier this week. And he is donating $4.2 million for personal protective gear to hospitals that were affected the most. So my smooth move goes to Thomas Tall. Good pick. Bob, I'm gonna have a little bit of sense of humor here for this one. Any spouse out there who cuts her husband or boyfriend's hair, that's who I'm giving my smooth move to. I'm at a, look at me, I'm done. I mean, I, I don't know what to do at this point. Uh, my, I'm afraid my, my, I don't trust her with scissors or, or a razor. <laughs> or an electronic razor, for that matter. Uh, uh, and so I don't know what I'm going to do, but other people, they might have somebody who's hooked it up for them. I'm not that lucky. Yeah, I, I like the look, Andrew. I wonder what Rich is going to do. His hair never moves. He doesn't need any assistance there. Just let's grow. I'm waiting it out. Put all I'm that it product out. in there, you know, and that, it's easy. All right. <laughs> Armina Stone, Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops you're going to find anywhere. Check them out at Armina Stone. When we come back, Christian McCaffrey, is he worth $16 million a year? That's next.